Greetings from Columbus Grove, and we have Northwest Conference Soccer for you here this afternoon. The girls' side of things here, advancing along with Evan Skilder. Pleasure to be with you here today. We got this venue between the, the Bold, Lady Bulldogs and the Lady Pirates, two teams atop the conference. And Evan, this one lines up to be the de facto title game to decide who is the girls' soccer champ once again in the Northwest Conference. Absolutely. Bluffton 5 0 right now in the Northwest Conference. Columbus Grove 4 0. It is Bluffton's last game in the Northwest Conference. So if they win this, they are crowned champions effectively. Columbus Grove, if they win, still have to win at least one more game to take home the title by themselves, but either way, these are two really good teams, Bluffton 11 and one overall, Columbus Grove nine, one and one. So uh, man, I, I'm, I've been looking forward to this one. I'm glad we get to call it together. Absolutely, two of the ladies to look out for today for Grove, Lauren Ockmoody leading scorer at 23 goals in the season. Sammy Scholes with 18 scores for Bluffton, and Allison Diller has chipped in 12 as well. So this is these are two programs that can get it into the back of the nets. Grove on the year, uh, they've uh, been able to, well, looking on down, look like 40 goals for, and for Bluffton they've scored 55, so pretty good clips offensively up and down uh, the schedule all year. Early corner here as Bluffton takes it short, they're just trying to get the ball into the box. That one is going to be a bit wide right, but like you said, a lot of goals scored between these two teams and uh, two really, really good players out there. Ockmoody, just a sophomore. Sammy Scholes for Bluffton is a senior, but those two have uh, have a lot of goals to their names in their careers. Lauren Ockmoody already uh, one of the top goal scorers in, in program history. It's a young program, but she's still a very impressive player to watch. Yeah, that's a, a good one to help get, a, again, a young program off the ground and really fired up, and it gets a lot of the youngsters excited about the game. Let's meet the starters. First for the home Lady Bulldogs of Grove. You have Lauren Ockmoody is, is, is a sophomore. Devaney Pingle is a freshman wearing number three. Alice, excuse me, Alyssa Cook is number six. She's a sophomore. Senior Caitlin Garmater is number eight. Ruth Myers, number 15, is a freshman. Senior Hannah Schrader is number 17. Emerson Hawker is number 20. She is a freshman. Sophomore Ella Dotson is number 22. Chelsea McKenna is a senior wearing number 27. And in goal, Gwen Langles is a senior. She's in that bright green kit as Bluffton tries to approach her. She'll hold on with the mitts right there. Let's meet the Lady Pirates. They're starters. Sophomore number 10 is Jordan Schweingruber. Ella Armstrong is a junior. She wears number two. Fellow junior Jasmine Hastings is number 12. And then the senior crew is the whole rest of the, the lineup. All seniors, uh, the, the remaining eight on the pitch for the Lady Pirates as they start to get things to the top of their third of the offensive side, but Allison Diller is number 14, Riley Eaches is number 6, Kendall Giesegi is number 16, Carson Howenstein is number 8, Olivia Matthews number 1, uh, Michaela Schweingruber is number 4, Sammy Scholes number 19, and in net, Julia Mahaffey in the black off to our right in net for Bluffton. The team's really just trying to feel each other out right now, as you usually see that at the beginning of soccer matches. Or you're just trying to figure out how the defense is playing, Bluffton playing with that standard flat back four. And one interesting thing to note about Columbus Grove is, is you'll see them play kind of a different type of defensive formation. Right now they have two players back almost at the front of their final third, and then all the way back by the goalkeeper is another defender, which you don't normally see kind of like that, they call it like a sweeper, but uh, you think of a, a safety in football, someone that plays deep and eliminates the deep ball. It makes it really tough to get in behind the defense. As you see it right there, Chelsea McKenna coming up to play that for the Lady Dogs. Now Ruth Myers plays it forward, but not much before Bluffton can redirect. Knock Moody gets in the way there. It's going to go off of Bluffton last, so that gives Grove the possession here. Interesting. Call by the mm -hmm. official there. Neil Brown, Wes Mason, our officials tonight, thanking them for coming on out and uh, officiating the competition tonight. Here's McKenna, midfield for Columbus Grove, and now Pingle will chase things down near the sideline. Lost it for a moment, but last touch by Bluffton. Well, the league wins for the Lady Bulldogs. Clued over Jefferson, Allen East. Ada in Spencerville to this point. Their lone defeat 
Came to the hand of Botkins. And for Bluffton, give you the tail of the tape there. Again, league wins over pretty much the same schools, Spencerville, Crestview, Aldis, Jefferson, and Ada. Again, this is their last conference match. A game last year, Evan, that went to Grove and was one of the lone losses of the year for a Bluffton team that went to the district finals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We had that game on WOSN as well as me and Kevin Peel, actually, your Falcon buddy. That uh, had that game, and yeah, it was, it was certainly a good one. It came down to the wire. Seen a lot of good matchups between these two squads. There's a free kick way out for Columbus Grove. He's sent down, but held on by Mahaffey for Bluffton. I like that ball, though. That's a low driver that hits the ground right in front of the goalkeeper. A lot of times you just see a, a, a deflection, a parry away, and often you can s mm -hmm. get a, a rebound goal. And even on a natural surface like this, you might even get a hop in there. Yeah, absolutely. There's a strike coming in and knocked away by Columbus Grove. And a defender maybe had the, the wind knocked out of her momentarily. Yeah, you may see a lot of deep shots from Bluffton as Columbus Grove really likes to sag back defensively and take up a lot of space in the box. It makes it hard to get possession up close. So a lot of times they'll try to take shots from outside, get the ball knocked down, and uh, just poke one in. Skulls playing it deep there on that left corner. Now Grove is able to clear it away. Might see one here. That's each is on the try for Bluffton, but the Grove defense stands, t stands tall so far. Pingle trying to navigate out of the defense, tripped up and get an infraction against Bluffton. Yeah, just some feet tangled up there. Bluffton coming in behind Pingle. Nice job by her, fending off two defenders and drawing the foul. Just trying to continue and speed away. It's the free kick done by Ella Dodson. Lady Bulldogs still looking to try to funnel that ball over into the direction of Lauren Ockmoody, but have not been able to find her just yet. And now Bluffton plays with the ball at their feet. Little misdirection and set on in and through for the early score for the Bluffton Pirates. Really good assist on that far side by Allison Diller. She could have taken the early corner, but instead she just went around the defender, which allowed her to hit one on the ground right to Sammy Scholes. And just like that, Scholes with the goals. Scholes makes it 1-0 Bluffton here in the first half, just a handful of minutes in. Clock stops there at 32.43. And we play on. And now this is where things get a little more interesting, Evan, now with something on the scoreboard. We'll see how Columbus Grove can react down a goal early. That's always that first indicator of where the rest of this match may go. Yeah, it's going to give Bluffton a lot of confidence. Not sure what we're waiting on here. And just making sure the looked like it was something with timing. Oh, gotcha. And that went off one of the shoulders of a Bluffton player off of Schools and will head out. Be tossed back in by Columbus Groves. Chelsea McKenna lops it to the feet, but Howenstein, uh, Howenstein, excuse me, of Bluffton towing this near the left of the box for the Lady Pirates. Sent on back towards midfield. Wisely poked out near side. Jasmine Hastings last to touch it. Over towards Akmudi. Kind of a two on five situation here and tries to tow it off to the right. Able to continue this. Look at the ball control by Akmudi and it's just knocked away by Bluffton. Now that takes away some of the momentum though, advancing the ball near the net. Yeah, certainly. And that's what an early goal does for you. It allows you to. Uh, maybe send some numbers backward a little bit. And Columbus Grove, a team that likes to keep defenders back behind the ball. And so, like you said, it 
it created a, a situation where it was one on four or five. And that's going to be tough. Eventually, Columbus Grove is going to have to get aggressive and move forward, but still plenty of time left. You can stick with the game plan for now. Here's Eaches from atop the box, sends it to the right. That'll go beyond and keep on rolling. It's one of the interesting facets playing out here at Grove. There's not really a backstop, but you have some of the some of that grown up out there to stop the ball from rolling instead of a fence. Yeah, tough too because there I don't see any ball boys or girls mm -hmm. out here. Nope, old school today. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> A lot of red shirts gather around a Sammy Scholes, and she deflects it right into the direction of, well, the Photog over there. Digging things out and well, getting his money's worth today. That's right. So a corner on the way for Bluffton. Allison Dillard to that far corner. We'll line it up. She'll go outside here. Fires it up. Towards the top of the box, and Skoll sends it up over top of the crossbar and out, giving Columbus Grove the possession for now. Almost identical to the first chance we saw where Skoll's came near post and just put a foot on it and popped it up over the goalkeeper. Good delivery from Diller once again. Ten minutes have gone by, and still one nothing on the Charles River scoreboard today. Charles River in Spencerville is the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. They're now hiring, so visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Loose ball right in front of the net for Bluffton, but we got a whistle before be the yet yeah, before it's banged on through. Or is that against Bluffton? They're retreating as this as if it is against. A lot of carnage down inside. That was a strange call. Bluffton were the ones that ended up on the ground right there, but play continues anyway. I honestly thought, well, I was almost certain he gave a penalty. Akmudi sends it ahead for Columbus Grove near Ruth Myers, but Eaches finds it for Bluffton. Centering pass near the top of the box and deflected away outright. And it stays in there for the Lady Pirates to do something with and then before it's ping-ponged out. I think Bluffton just needs to focus on getting the ball into the box. They're trying to be a little too cute with it, maybe a little too precise. There's going to be so much action inside the box, so many feet, so many bodies, that if you can just get it in there, it, you're bound to have someone just get a foot on it. It's, it's not going to be a pretty goal, but it's going to be a goal nonetheless. Uh, so the more you can get it in the box, the more dangerous you're going to be here in this game. Changes in the Bluffton lineup. So some fresh legs, and they still have it in their part of the field, too. Grove trying to make them retreats. It's going to be set out. Olivia Matthews will throw this in for Bluffton. Into the direction Allison Diller, we're going to go off of White last, so Grove will take over. Throw in from the far side. Columbus Grove could really benefit from just getting some possession and sending it for. There, you there go. it is. It's exactly what they needed. Long pass ahead. Ruth Myers couldn't keep it moving ahead, but she'll get some help here as she dribbles this ball away from a two Bluffton defenders and tow it away. Each just sent it out. Now Myers in the direction of Ock Moody. Trying to wrestle her way back in in front of that ball, and this will be deflected and headed out. Last touch by Carson Garmater. So here comes Blumpton to throw in after the turnover by, Bluff, or by Grove. But not for long. Yeah, good pressure from Bluffton. I like how aggressive they're being as soon as Grove touches the ball. They get right on it. And then that's exactly because Columbus Grove likes to send it forward. If they get space and enough time, they're going to send it behind the defense and let a couple really speedy players like Ock Moody run onto the end of it. Again, they tried it right there, but Bluffton did a nice job stepping up. Yeah, back three or four of the defense right now for Bluffton is 
Really standing tall and not allowing any penetration really offensively to this point and then playing up. A lot of action to this third of the field with Blumpton in possession. Throw in goes just to the right of the goal but scooped up by Gwen Langles. It's a good job by Langhouse. I really like how quickly she got that ball away as well. Nice job by Icha stepping up. But again, there you see it. Columbus Grove just trying to get the ball into that final third. Good pass into the middle. And deflected up here. Grove with some numbers but can't get to the ball. And then bumped away. Jasmine Hasty, the last to touch that on the defensive side for Bluffton. Toss in for Grove and a quickly right back out. Blair Utendorf playing the defense right near the sideline. Bounds away as Myers tries to wrestle that away from Gisagi of Bluffton. Ultimately, Bluffton has the teamwork in the back row. Yeah, good job by Bluffton. Just playing team soccer, getting that ball out of there. Three different girls touched it before they got it to the midfield, and now you see a really nice counter opportunity. And you're seeing the meticulous working the ball up the field for the Pirates on that last attack. Now they have the advantage of one goal early. So able to do that, maybe not as much pressure as this one goes open towards Utendorf to the left. But Grove just kind of trying to find that, that big shot, maybe more swinging, swinging big, and maybe they can find a, a ball behind the defense, take advantage that way. Just two different, di very differing styles as this one sneaks on by and through. And another goal for Bluffton. Allison Diller gets that behind and into the net. And another good job by Bluffton just getting that ball into the box. And I really like what Diller did right there. She took one touch, she turned, and she shot it. It didn't have a ton of power, but it was well placed to that back left post. Really, really like that goal from Bluffton. And again, they just need to pound that ball into the box. Get it up there as much as they can. And they're going to make some really good things happen. Take our first time out here shortly. 2-0 lead for... Bluffton on WOSN. Thirteenth goal of the year for Allison Diller of Bluffton, and it doubles the Lady Pirate lead here at Columbus Grove. Last year, Evan, it was Grove that went on the road to win at Bluffton and uh, spoil the at least undefeated run through the NWC, but now Bluffton looking to get right back to business, and this would be the closing bell onto their run through the league this season. Yeah, they certainly have some momentum. They've got a game plan. They're executing it. They're getting the ball into the box as quickly as they can, and they're doing a really nice job putting pressure on this Columbus Grove defense who really like to sag back, and you still see all but two players for Columbus Grove in the box right now. Really trying to make it tough for Bluffton to score, and I don't think Bluffton's going to be too worried about that. I'm sure they love having more numbers back on defense rather than up trying to score on offense. A lot of good defense there by Grove on that last possession, and it turns into a corner for Bluffton anyhow. Shot attempt there, J.C. Crawford's tried to pound that through just to the left of the net. Looks like Gieske's going to take this corner. All right, it's a high floater. But it gets snuffed out, and Bluffton will drop back and regroup. Good steal. This is where Columbus Grove can be dangerous. She's on side. And it deflects their direction. There's some help side. And a shot on net, knocked down. And again, ball is still loose, and the keeper trying to get after it. Deflects it away, or out of harm's way. Good aggressiveness from Mahaffey right there. That's one of those, you talked about it. On a field like this, you can see some awkward uh, bounces, and that one bounced away from her further than she thought, but she stuck with it, mm -hmm. dove in there, and was able to get a hand on it. Getting the job done, keeping the ball out of net. And this will come, instead of back that way, it's going to stay with Grove heading on in. 
Almost halfway through this opening half of play. Varsity girls soccer from Columbus Grove. Thanks for being with us here this evening. Northwest Conference title very much up for grabs for both of these schools. Bluffton in a good start to uh, claim it once more. And that, you know, Evan, you really, you're one who can attest to this, but just the programs on both the boys and the girls' side, just it, as far as Northwest Ohio is concerned, it's one of the standards. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of consistency within the program. You see, you know, they, they've got a really good youth development system, too. They start down at U8s with Bluffton Soccer Club, and generally they're playing with the same players and similar coaches throughout their entire, uh, I guess, careers, if, mm -hmm. you, if you will, until they get into high school. And uh, it's, it's really nice to have that kind of consistency throughout the years for all these players. And you can see it when Bluffton plays. Uh, they're a team that really does a good job in possession. They move the ball well, and that's because they have that fluidity and that familiarity with each other. Langles is able to scoop up a loose ball in front of the nets. Keeps this a 2-0 lead for Bluffton. And a loose ball pried away by the Lady Pirates. And you can see right there another case of Columbus Grove just sagging back, putting numbers in the box. Claire Utendorf had the ball in the midfield right there in the top of the final third and still had plenty of space mm -hmm. to move. She wasn't challenged one bit by Columbus Grove. I think as this game progresses, Columbus Grove needs to think about stepping up, pressuring in the midfield, getting that possession we talked about with some space so they can boot it up to Ock Moody in the center or uh, I think that's number is at 19, uh, Macy Dunlap, or 15, excuse me. That's Ruth Myers here on the right. And again, Bluffton continues to play with the ball at their feet. Marley Kindle down in that far corner. Looks like it's going to leak out of the boundary. Bluffton will throw it back in. Olivia Matthews doing the honors. Towards Utendorf. Scoots near the goal line, and it's ripped away. But only just for a moment. It'll last ditch try. Skulls try to poke that on through, but Grove is able to keep it in front. And a bounce back near midfield, redirected to, by Michaela Swangruber. I'd be interested to see the possession stats in this game. Mm -hmm. I think Bluffton has had it for, boy, we've played 21 minutes. They've probably had it for 18. Mm -hmm. We've been looking left quite a bit. Right into that setting, Columbus Grove Sun. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful rural landscape here. Yes, it is. In Northwest Ohio. Free kick here for Grove going on in by Swingruber. Langles will pick that up for the Lady Bulldogs. This will be deflected, and Akmudi is able to play it in front of her. Just slightly defended well, and now over. For Grove, and the angle not quite there, and look at that sliding knee save by Mahaffey. That was a really good play by Columbus Grove, moving the ball to the right, and then the nice cross to the back post on the left. Mahaffey did such a nice job sliding over there, making herself big and wide, getting down to her knees and knocking that ball away. That was really good technique from uh, Mahaffey, who's been playing goalkeeper mm -hmm. for a really long time, and that really showed right there. Now those freshman Ruth Myers bringing the pressure along that right end. And here's the corner for Grove, their first of the day. It's going to get deflected right back out. And good defense by Bluffton. Just a little too much time on the ball right there. You just need to get a little bit of space, put that right back into the box. We've talked about that on Bluffton's end. But you get the ball into the box, you're dangerous. A lot of weird things can happen. Mm -hmm. Skulls looks like she's checking back in. I think mm -hmm. that's her. Forgot the binoculars today. Yes, we did. A little different angle than we're used to, so. But that's okay. Yeah. It means you get to be a little bit more up close and personal with the game. See it from a from ground level, at least from our point of view, which is always a good good thing to see. The field side seats. Mm-hmm. 
here. Bluffton continuing to look through that Grove defense. Marley Kindle looking for a space. Now finds Utendorf. She goes down over top of the ball, but Grove is able to redirect it. There goes Pingle. Keeps the possession for a little bit. Gets through three defenders. Loses her foot and goes down. And got a whistle. Looks like it's going to be against her. So Bluffton will get it back after the infraction. Uh, that time it resulted in a foul, but I'm still really impressed with what Pingle can do around defenders. She's really composed, especially for a freshman. Yeah, you look at the you look at the forwards right now for Columbus Grove. You have a sophomore and off Moody, and uh, two freshmen with Pingle and Myers running the front of that Columbus Grove offense. I mean, that is going to build a lot of confidence early in those young players. That means good things for this Grove program going forward. And I know year after year they'll they'll move people around to be in the best spot for the team because maybe there's maybe there's still some in waiting coming on sure. up that have that magic with the ball in their feet. Yeah, that's the great thing about a young program too is you know a lot of a lot of people in the community get pretty excited when you've got a new product, especially mm -hmm. when the product is winning Northwest Conference championships. Look at the speed for Akmudi gets to the ball, tried to turn the corner, but just could not finish the job, and it's knocked out by Bluffton, but. Because it's last touched by the Pirates, Columbus Grove will pick up the throw in from that far sideline and have a chance to do something with it offensively here and also get some fresh legs on the defensive side. Schweingruber checking in. Ella Armstrong checking in on the far side. And again, you look, look at Bluffton's roster, and they only have four underclassmen on this entire roster. Columbus Grove only has four seniors mm -hmm. on theirs. So definitely contrasting team makeup team makeup style of play like yeah. it, it's really the only thing that they share in common is they they find a lot of ways to win games and that is why we stand here today with you know 20 combined victories and the top two teams in northwest conference action that play right there is an example of how how hard it is to put the ball in behind the defense when there's a a safety, quote unquote, or a sweeper back right there. They tried to play it into Sammy Scholes. Looked like she was in behind the defense, but all of a sudden that defender comes up and knocks it away. There's Utendor with a try and deflected with the left hand, but saved with the shins for Lang Hills. We get close to 14 minutes to play in this first half. It's going to be a foot race, and it's Myers that gets there first, slides it across, and just above. That top crossbar, and out on Columbus Grove, but Ruth Myers won the race of the ball, got a good punch on it. That's what they do, period, is mm -hmm. get that ball in. They've got some really quick players up top, and you can see Bluffton's defense a little frustrated with the midfield for giving up so much space, because as soon as you give that space in the midfield, that's when they have time to send that ball in behind the defense. And I don't care how good you are or how fast you are, it's really tough to match the speed and athleticism from this Columbus Grove front two. So starting to see some rhythm on that Grove offense here. But Bluffton will play it forward into their third. Leading by two. Defense is able to get there first for Columbus Grove, trying to clear it out of the box. Scales gets in there, gives it a heave, and it hits the, the far side of the net. And we'll go out on the Pirates, and they will retreat. Yeah, that's the kind of play you look for, though. Again, turn, hard shot toward the goal. That one's certainly not the result they were looking for, but just the fact that they're consistently getting the ball toward the net and causing some havoc in the box is, is a really good look for Bluffton. And Grove can't quite get it cleared away with the free kick. But they'll try here. They got a lot of red shirts around the ball. And still ever so slightly inching it away from the net. And that'll go off of Grove and scooped up by the keeper. Good looking ball though right there from Bluffton. Good job. Under pressure. Again, just making something happen. Yeah, 
Look at the Lady Dogs swarm to the ball and set it up field, and it will bound just outside of the chalk. And changes in both lineups. Both freshmen for Bluffton done with their turns on field. Aubrey Burkholder, Blair Utendorf both head out. And Grove Content knocking it away and letting their defense get set. Yeah, and as this half wears on, as this game wears on, I'll have to see how Columbus Grove does in terms of their demeanor. It can get really frustrating when you're playing against a team that possesses like Bluffton does. Almost an open look for Carson Howenstein, but a save defensively for Columbus Grove keeps it right there at 2-0. Now Howenstein from the top of the box goes to the right. And beyond the reaches, Ella Armstrong the last closest there, and now they'll have to start over for Bluffton. And sent ahead a little short hop into the keeper, Gwen Langhalls, and she'll hold on to it. You certainly don't mind a shot like that, but you do want to see your offensive players get toward the box, kind of crash the goalkeeper a little bit, just in case there is that deflection or the goalkeeper mishandles it a little bit. Aegis has done a nice job putting a few shots on goal from outside the box. It's just Bluffton needs to get some players there to help clean the, clean the garbage up. A nice steal there for Alyssa Cook. Get it away from Sammy Scholes, and she'll try to chase it down. Once more for Bluffton, and that escapes the boundaries again. Free kick for Columbus Grove. Well, there's plenty of more soccer later this week on WOSN. We're getting near the end of the regular season. Key matches in the WBL, and of course this one in the Northwest Conference, Putnam County League, and more. It's at WOSN.TV to see the future broadcast schedule this week and the weeks to come. And before we know it, we're going to be diving right into those sectional tournaments for volleyball and soccer, football playoffs. Starting to heat up here. It's week number eight is upon us. Hard to believe. Already seven plus weeks down in high school football. Are the Kaleida and Elida athletic departments ready for all the tournament games that are coming their way? I feel like every year you and I are at one or both of those schools mm -hmm. a couple times a week during playoff time between soccer and volleyball. Yep, volleyball hosting, uh, I believe, I'll have to check into this again, but it, it used to be, I thought there was a, a D3 district in volleyball and a, well, the smallest division in soccer, of course, for those that aren't aware, is Division Three. So for soccer, a D3 would be at Kaleida. Same for volleyball with the, or for, for volleyball and uh, and for soccer. So there are, there are some of those days where you have simultaneous events happening indoors and outdoors in the same location. And those parking lots right there just off Main Street and Kaleida are packed, That's even right. some of the side streets. And Elida, it's always busy. Yes, it is. It is. They always have. Uh, they always seem to have some really great matchups there at Elida as well. Mm -hmm. At the field house or out at the soccer facility. It'll be here before we know it. Y'all crammed in there and cozy though at uh, at both spots. That's for sure. <laughs> that's right. That's one thing that seeing these these games as we've we've been around as a, a header goes out, Evan. And, Maybe some of these facilities are thinking, man, we're, there's there's a lot of people that come out not just to watch, but also to cover. Yeah. And as those boxes continue to grow and expand, they, those are always good things to see because they, the soccer program's getting the exposure that they rightfully deserve. Yep, and from a broadcast perspective, the bigger the press box, the better. I really like my space. There's some really, really nice facilities, mm -hmm. and you, you think about even just primarily soccer facilities, right? Ottoville with a great yep. soccer field, and Elida does a nice job. Bluffton with a good facility. St. Mary's, my goodness, they've got a video board at their soccer field. Yep, it, it is serious in some places. Did you mention Ottawa Glendorf? OG's another good one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you mentioned that one. 
I, I did not, but that's a, a good point. Sometimes I forget about that one because mm -hmm. it's not right there at the school. But yep. Yeah, certainly a great facility out at the park. And this is another great example as well of you know not being a right on school grounds, but hey, if we find a place, we'll nestle on in and we'll be here. Yeah, and, and they've really done a nice job out here. A couple sets of bleachers. They already have a pre or a concession stand over just behind us and see some youth soccer here in Columbus Grove happening behind us. Maybe we'll get you a shot of that later mm -hmm. on. Much smaller field. Much. Which which uh, cranks up the, the chaos. <laughs> That's right. I'd like to see one game of high school soccer played on a field that small. <laughs> this one goes to the back of the net. I'm going to go out on Bluffton. And the free kick goes on in for Columbus Grove, but the Lady Pirates able to redirect that ball, play it ahead. And look at Langhouse come out of her post and disrupt the play enough, doesn't hold onto the ball, but I think, I think that aggression did its job as Bluffton loses possession out of bounds. I think even maybe Grove touched it last. We'll see what the call is, and indeed it's gonna stay with Bluffton. Yeah, you're right, though. Linghouse needed to come out of that box and at least knock the ball away because Bluffton was about to establish some mm -hmm. pretty dangerous possession in the box. It took away the angle and then some. Getting close to five minutes before the end of the half. Two early goals for Bluffton. 32-43 mark and 24-37. Their top scorers on the year, Sammy Scholes and Allison Diller. Knocked it through the bars, and that one almost grazes the left edge and Still gets away. Play. It's Gieske coming all the way up from her defensive position. Good work. I'll send it up to Aegis. Send it on down. Skull's looking for an angle. Knocked away. Well played by Columbus Grove. Still have the defensive positioning, taking those angles out. And there, Myers with a nice takeaway. Oh, that's a big one from Ichis right there because Akmudi had cut in front of the defender and she was going to be in behind. If that pass would have gotten through, they would have had a great chance, but Ichis did a nice job just sticking that foot out at the last second getting it away. Big spot here in the last moments of the half. Grove playing it forward into their offensive end. Emerson Hawker will throw it in for the Lady Bulldogs. Going Ock Moody's direction. She keeps it down where she can get it only and then knocks it down below the goal line and it'll be redirected back for Bluffton. They'll have a goal kick coming up. Got to go corral the ball and get started again. Yeah, they'll certainly take their time as well. That one goal lead, really no, or two goal lead, excuse me, and no reason to rush anything. Keeper Mahaffey will send this back into play. Good hustle by Grove. McKenna for the Lady Bulldogs does not let that ball get to midfield. And now Akmudi trying to do the same from midfield. But this will leak back for Bluffton. Diller will take off along that far sideline. Playing that boundary as a little bit of assistance. And lost the handle. So Grove will get it back with a two, two minutes plus to go in the half. Might just have to slowly inch their way forward. Ball in the direction of Devaney Pingle. Popped up towards Ock Moody. She'll head it out. Now Aegis with a big charge and it gets behind the Grove defense. Again, there's that sweeper there to clean everything up, boot it away.
Throw in towards Skulls, makes contact with Cook. Ball gets in front and a little wide. I believe that try was by it's either Eaches or Howenstein. Couldn't quite make the numbers out. That eight or that six. But girl possession and out. Definitely Howenstein playing it ahead. And now Skulls waiting for that bounce to come down. And in the meantime, Grace Meyer is able to get there and disrupt the play. I like that attempt right there. I know it doesn't go in, but she had so much time right there. Schwein grew mm -hmm. her plenty of time. And I like the placement, too. She tried to go to that back that back post, excuse me, and uh, ju just scuffed it a little wide, but a great effort nonetheless. Gets us to the last 100 seconds of the half. And a whistle away from us. And can they go again? Gets bluffed in. Yeah, they call that a, a dangerous play. The foot got a little bit mm. too high. And hockey to be high sticking, but yeah. we don't have that in soccer. But the concept is there. Speaking of that, how about hockey preseason and NBA preseason starting up? Sports Equinox is coming for <laughs> us, my right. man. That's right, that's right. Major League Baseball's playoffs are days away. NFL well underway. We're already firing college football coaches. It is <laughs> very, very much full swing with everything here. You know who's not firing a football coach, though, is the Syracuse Orange and your <laughs> old boy Dino Babers. My guy, Dino. Wake Forest not doing that either because the guy yeah. before him, Mr. the one and only Dave Klassen. That's right. Doing Bowling good Green. things down at Wake. Former Bowling Green coaches are showing out right mm -hmm. now in college football. Neither of them are named Urban Meyer, <laughs> and that makes it even sweeter. As we run off the final few seconds of the half, didn't even mention Little Debbie's, but we have another 40 minutes coming at you here from Columbus Grove, where Bluffton takes a 2-0 advantage into the half, and Northwest Conference Soccer ladies will return after this break on WOSN. Welcome back to Columbus Grove, where it is 2-0 at the beginning of the second half. In favor of Bluffton, first half scores came for Carson Howenstein to correct our first score of the game. And then for Allison Diller for Bluffton. Those are your two scores for the Lady Pirates. And right now Columbus Grove with some early tempo with the ball playing in their forward attack third here to start the second half. I'm Garrett Bansford along with Evan Skilder, and we have a, a cloudless sky over top of this facility tonight and setting sun. There's no lights out, which is why we're playing a little bit early right. into the setting sun. Tell you what, I'm glad to have a tent, though. Thanks to Jacob O'Neill for bringing the trailer and providing the tent for us. Yeah, he was able to get that halftime hot dog down. and <laughs> yeah, well. We'll leave it at that. That was it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he got fed. He loves a good part. hot dog. That's the one thing around the, the WSN crew to a lot of volleyball and soccer contests is you haven't heard by now the concessions are consumed and graded by him, and he's the one that has that. So if you're looking to better the, the breadth of that, <laughs> He's your man. And if you're looking to sponsor a uh, concession stand segment, <laughs> yes. I think we've got you covered. Absolutely. M Miles Holiday is all over your popcorn. <laughs> Jacob O'Neill is all about the hot dogs. And Mark Shine covers everything else. Everything else. And if it's me, just send me over to Antwerp for some fish sandwiches. Ooh. And we are going to be A-OK. -okay. Concession stand fish sandwiches? Yes. At Antwerp, they are a gem. Whew. Seems dangerous. Like it, it literally makes me a little nervous that you're fried, eating those. Fried fish sandwiches. They okay. are top notch. Nice. So two minutes in to this second half, Anna Grove will send the ball back into play. For ball went below the goal line off of Bluffton. That changes the possession there. Similar to those basketball rules going in and out. Just the who touches what where is big as a. Big old strike for Bluffton is knocked down by Gwen Langhills of Columbus Grove, the keeper in net. The senior keeps us a 2-0 game. That's a nice hard shot right there from Scholes as well. 
Good job by Langhouse, just knocking it down and then picking it back up instead of parrying it away for a deflection goal. And that'll get bumped over off of Grove. Jordan Swingruber was nearest for that for Bluffton. And a toss back in. Got away from the first set of defenders, but now Grove can clear it out. And here goes Lauren Akmudi. Pops the ball up near side. It's a foot race on. Devaney Pingle trying to turn that corner. Defended by Olivia Matthews. Now Pingle with a shot. Couldn't cross it up. Bodied just wide to the net, but a good looking play there developing for Columbus Grove. And it looks like it went off of a Lady Pirate. So a corner kick on the way for. Bluffton, or for Columbus Grove, excuse me. Yeah, really nice job by Columbus Grove working it down the outside. Pingle's got those wheels, and that was a, a great job by her getting to the left and sending that ball back post. It was a really, really good cross. Still keeping the ball up in front of the net. Grove looking for something to get some momentum back and get a score, and that's popped up over... Just fisted out of the air by Julia Mahaffey of Bluffton. And another corner for Columbus Grove. Really smart play right there by Mahaffey. Sometimes you see goalkeepers just try to grab that with two hands, and it'll sneak right through. It's tough to grab a ball that's that high over your head, so she just did the same thing, punched it up over the crossbar. That's what you're taught as a goalkeeper. If you're not sure, just knock it up and over. Now here comes the corner again with the left foot for Columbus Grove. And just nobody on that back end to angle it over. But they're not going to give up on the possession. Ella Dotson trying to keep it ahead. But now here comes some danger for Bluffton. And a soft touch in the middle of the pitch. And Carson Garmatter got there for Columbus Grove to slow up the momentum. Now we just get sent back into the box through a defender and grabbed by Langhelms. There's nice these, punt right there. Yeah, big bouncers. Who's going to get there? And look at this for Akmudi. And runs into the keeper after she grabs a hold of it. Tough play right there. Mm -hmm. All out hustle going one direction. and Couldn't quite get the numbers or the bounce right. The Bluffton with... Nice. Good pass into the middle for Howenstein. Passes left side looking for Skulls, but it's going to get booted away. Two teams atop the Northwest Conference in girls soccer. 5-0 Bluffton, 4-0 Columbus Grove, 9-1-1. and Lady Bulldogs this year and 11-2 and Lady Pirates. Get near the end of their regular seasons. Final games for both schools are lined up for the, the 13th of October. Shot a little too strong for Bluffton. One of those, you, you kind of had it lined up, you had the space, go ahead and give it a give it a look. Yeah, especially with a 2-0 lead. You've got a lot of leeway to take shots like that. And honestly, it was only about two feet too high. Mm -hmm. It was not a bad effort from that far out. Six and a half finished here in the second half. And we got a whistle. Looked like a little bit too much with the upper body from Akmudi. And it'll give the possession back and a free kick for Bluffton. Columbus Grove's actually moving Akmudi back a little bit. They're struggling to move the ball through the midfield, and she's one of their mo more athletic players who's probably the best on the team with the ball at her feet. And so they're trying to move her mm -hmm. back some so she can be the one to bring the ball through the midfield, get around some defenders, and maybe instead of trying to kick it up and over, they're trying to use some possession to get down into the box and develop some chances. Michaela Swinegruber will kick it away, and it goes actually right on goal. Picked up by Lady Bulldog keeper, Langhalls. Now Swine Gruber again finds the ball. Gets deflected away, being chased down by Kendall Giesegi. Couldn't quite catch up to it. 
But so, Bluffton's going to keep it. Yeah, it's out off of Columbus Grove. Hits Coach Jamie Mahaffey mm. on that far side. And, and Jamie Mahaffey is another example. We talked in the first half about Bluffton's youth program and how uh, you know, a lot of the, the players play together for a long time, but a lot of times the coaches stick with them as well. Jamie Mahaffey's a guy that's been coaching this age uh, of player since U8s, mm -hmm. right? So that talk about consistency and having the same voice coaching you uh, all the way through <laughs> eight years old to now. That's just a big deal for, for any program, let alone one that's had a mm -hmm. lot of success over the years. Yeah, you don't hear that happening really in, in anything, let alone... A a, a singular voice at the top of a varsity program and maybe not even with a group of, of players. So a real testament to the success that they've had throughout. This is a group that's not only, yeah, there's one there's one effort when you, you play together and you stay together, you stick together, you're, you're playing you know, a club and, and everything you can get your hands on. When you have that consistent coaching and a, everybody's bought in, it's completely different. Here's an open look for Skulls. And it's another goal for Bluffton. Nice ball in right there from Allison Diller, who will get the assist on the play. But how about the first touch from Skulls? She knew the defender was a little bit to the right, so she touched it to the defender's left to get around her and took a nice hit, tucking it top right in for the third goal for Bluffton. And my goodness, they're really starting to pull away here. Columbus Grove's got to get something going. We'll take a quick timeout, and we'll come back for the ensuing kickoff on a WOSN. Three nothing Bluffton. Goals by Howenstein, Diller, and Scholes in this contest for the Lady Pirates. Charles River is our scoreboard sponsor tonight. They are located in Spencerville and they are hiring the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio. Apply today at jobs.criver.com. Garrett and Evan with you on the call today, Northwest Conference Soccer. Bluffton looking to close out their conference schedule with a perfect 6-0 record and earn the title. A team a year ago that went 14-4-1, lost in district championships. And Columbus Grove went 13-2-1 a year ago and actually lost their tournament opener to Conference Foe Allen East. Kick at the top and Ooh. headed on in. But the first goal of the day for Columbus Grove. Yeah, it's Hawk Moody right there. How about the header? But I'll tell you what, it's the delivery that I'm most impressed by. That was a really well-played ball. Floats it right up over the goalkeeper, and Hawk Moody basically jumps into the goal on the header to put it in. You couldn't serve it up any better than that, and that's a really nice answer from Columbus Grove. They get that goal back. Hawk Moody's 24th score of the year. And well over a half hour to go. Yeah, plenty of time if Columbus mm -hmm. Grove can string something together here. This is a momentum game, and when you find scores like that and can pull some in, they can come in waves. Absolutely. Good physicality from Columbus Grove's defense right there to shield Skulls off the ball so they can clear it to the midfield. Often find some angle there. Look to set their offense up ever so carefully. That gets popped up behind and Pingle Ooh. chasing after the ball runs in to the Bluffton player, Olivia Matthews. That halts the play. Took the defensive advantage there and Bluffton gets the possession. It'll get more and more physical as the game wears on, so not surprising to see some contact there. I think Pingle's just trying to get around to get the ball, and Matthews knew nothing malicious. Mm -hmm. She got up, smiled, and play continues. Bluffton content to play it back and just get a good grasp on the ball. And a good roll off the loose ball. Allison Diller punched down near the 
met by Ella Armstrong, but a little too far for the Lady Pirates. And we'll give things back to Columbus Grove. Bluffton will make changes, three coming back into the game. Two freshmen back yep. in. Burke Holder and Utendorf, and then J.C. Crawfus. You got him. That's the three. Sometimes I forget that I'm not on play-by-play. -play. I do a lot of play-by-play -play stuff, so Garrett, I apologize for stepping on your calls every now and then. Uh, there is no one in this vicinity that would be objected to you stepping in on those <laughs> kinds of things. Good color analyst. The best, the best of them are the most aware. There you go. <laughs> right. Good idea there from Hallenstein. Just a little bit too much for Skulls to get there. But I'll tell you what, Hallenstein did a nice job. Again, she gets some space, and that's just a freshman, but she showed a lot of composure in knowing that she needed to play that ball just to the left of the defender. The touch comes with time, but you really like to see a player that composed at this age. Good boot for Bluffton's Jasmine Hastening. Does not let that ball get behind the defense. Finds the middle for Eaches. Riley Eaches goes towards that right corner. Turned up by Aubrey Burkholder. And the shot attempt goes wide. Goal kick for the Lady Bulldogs. The just under the 27 minute mark left to go in the contest. The sun's getting further and further down. Now you yes, and I have uh, quite a stark difference in our height, but I know you're standing up to try to keep it out of your eyes. I am using my long torso to <laughs> take care of that for me, but I'm going to have to stand up in a second. Oh, off the crossbar. And defense, there is Scholes was trying to belly that ball back in, and Alyssa Cook just was able to, on the defensive side for Grove, keep her out of position, and Went off a Bluffton last, but it's not going to advance far upfield before they turn it back towards their goal. Sammy Scholes turns the corner. And uh, off the keeper at a diving stop. Langholz kind of deflected and got the ricochet, and she just pounced right back on top of it. That's an example of what we've been talking about for a lot of this game and getting the ball toward the goal because right there, Croft has had a chance to put in that deflection or that rebound, excuse me. Here's we'll back to that in a second. Yeah, Pingle trying to chase that down for Columbus Grove. and Olivia Matthews got around the ball for Bluffton, just knocked it out of bounds and lets the rest of her unit get upfield to play some defense for Bluffton. And with that, Columbus Grove makes a change in their lineup. And again, that's that's one of the most effective things you can do to create chances is send the ball toward goal, low, hard, driven, and, and just cause some havoc in the box. Good ball ahead for Grove. At least it's able to flip some of the positioning on the field for a moment, but... Secured by Julia Mahefi. It's a good job by Mahefi coming off the line right there and not hesitating. Akhmudi's very fast, so if she thinks twice about that move to come off the line for even a second, Akhmudi's got a really good chance. So you like that from Mahefi, a, a really experienced goalkeeper, as we mm -hmm. mentioned earlier. Here's a corner on the way for Blumpton. It is Skulls down there to do it. Directs it in front of the nets. And off the pause there of Langhalls. And looks like we might be doing that again from that corner. Yeah, I don't think she meant to keep it on the ground. But again, you see how effective it is when the ball's low. Makes it tough for the goalkeeper. At that part of the day, you know, there is that sunshine right there. And Ooh. that was not able to stay out of that corner of the goal. And it goes to the back for Bluffton even at the 24-minute mark. J.C. Crawford that time the goal scorer for Bluffton. And 
in a great spot, crashing the front post, and each has put a nice ball low, driven right into the path of Crawfish, who sneaks it past the goalkeeper. It's a big one for Bluffton right there. For Crawfish, 14th score of the year. That's the fourth most for Bluffton. Good catch, sixth. Still the fourth most, though. That's a good call. It is. <laughs> I can count that high. 14 is just a staggering number. That's the it only is. That's the only reason that piqued my interest. I Ignore that one. <laughs> I hate correcting him, but you know what? No, it's we'll, good. We'll get it right here. Still a big big one for JC right there. Enough to keep me honest and humble. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. Thank you. Here's Sammy Scholes. Leaves the contest for Bluffton in a way for... Marley Kendall, it's in the middle of that offensive front for Bluffton. Ball goes in her direction. And still has it at her feet. Look for Crawfus, and her kick is deflected out of bounds. Let's see if that went north of the flag, if it's going to be a throw-in or a corner kick. It appears it's going to be a throw-in. So Crawfus in the direction of Matthews, and her pass gets way out in front, goes out of bounds, and will give Grove possession back. Still down three as we hit the midway point of this second half, or at least approaching it. And That's Grove good. will play that well out of bounds. I like the, the idea from Bluffton here, keeping the ball out wide and spreading this Columbus Grove defense apart a little bit. You might be able to find some seams inside the box, but it is also just forcing that defense that likes to collapse. It's forcing them, them to spread out and be uncomfortable inside. Riley sets her into the game for the Lady Pirates. They're playing their whole defense forward two. Everything really compacts. We haven't seen anything in the even close to offside today. That's a good point. Definitely a product of Columbus Grove playing way, way deep. And Bluffton's done, a, or excuse me, Columbus Grove's done a really nice job offensively staying on side. Bluffton plays that flat back four, and Columbus Grove likes to send it in behind, so it takes a lot of discipline to not get behind that last defender too early. It's deflected down, but Crawford isn't giving up on the play, and it looked like that was deflected by Columbus Grove. This will give the Lady Pirates a corner. And Carson Howenstein will line this up from the right flag. Play starts as they start to crash towards the goal, and the ball is deflected the other direction. Lined up with Kendall Giesegi on the last attempt for Bluffton. The Lady Bulldogs, though, their defense holds strong, pokes it out, allows Bluffton to regroup. 4-1, and we had three of our five goals here in the second half, just in the last 20 minutes. You see Bluffton comfortable ro rotating in some midfielders and some forwards from the bench, but they've kept that starting back four because this Columbus mm -hmm. Grove offense, if you take a playoff, you see that in football or basketball a lot, but if you take a playoff here in soccer, they're going to get in behind you. They're going to score. So you can tell Coach Mahaffey really respects this Columbus Grove offensive attack. Here's Blair Utendorf for the pass to Howenstein. She gives it up. Almost snuck that by. And Langholz gets the bits on it finally after regrouping. He's able to find that ball. And we hit the halfway mark of the second half. And Bluffton, 20 minutes of game action away from a Northwest Conference title that they can secure with a, a win tonight. And Columbus Grove with a, one match after tonight to go. They'll have to play Crestview. And popped up right near midfield. It'll be Bluffton possession. I thought you were going to catch that, Garrett. It was close, but I wasn't leaving my spot. <laughs> Hit this umbrella over top. 
Howenstein and uh, Crawford out for Bluffton. I'll rotate back in. Ball still alive, and Marley Kendall off to the left, but she had a good look. Good job by Bluff, then again, getting the ball into the box, and the more they possess it, the happier they're going to be, right? Columbus Grove just not able to string anything together. They haven't had too many good chances in the last, really, 10 to 15 minutes. They try to get something going here, but Mahaffey still deep off that line, knowing what Columbus Grove is going to try to do. Grove just cannot get it any more forward. You're seeing this bluff and just the depth of their team today too. Making changes, rotating in, and hasn't been much of a, a slowdown in their possession game. Olivia Matthews tosses it back into play to Aubrey Burkholder. And that's going to be last touch by Bluffton. And then Columbus Grove will take over. Hannah Schrader will send this in. Here for the near sideline. Looking in the direction of Pingle and passed up over top of her head. Oops. And there's some big contact at midfield and the Schrader with the foul committed against Riley Setzer. Setzer went down there for Bluffton. She bounces right back up. She's gonna get in position for this Olivia Matthews free kick. The shadows get long. You can see the allergens floating around the air where we're at right now, <laughs> they, too. They're which crushing is... me for sure. <laughs> There's a good cross, but nobody there to smack it through for Bluffton, but the ball is going to stay within, within bounds. And they... Now let's see what Columbus Grove can do with it here. They just have three on five coming up the field. A long run for Akmudi to try to get back to this. It's going to be thrown in her direction and deflected back near, looks like Myers, Ruth Myers nearest to it. This will be a stoppage, and Grove will get the, the benefit here, but down three with about 16 and a half to play in regulation to find a way to get a couple of quick goals. Yeah, it's a big chance for them. They need to put this ball middle of the net, and we just saw it. Their first goal come from a, a spot very similar to this. Like Dotson sends it in, but it's high and off to the right. <clears throat> and Bluffton will take Mac over with a goal kick. Keeper is going to do it for him. Kick's going to come near, near sideline, and Riley Sensor tried to angle it back in as she got up in the air. Now he had a Schrader to throw in for Columbus Grove. Into the corner, we're going to go right back. We're going to replay that. And a Schrader toss in towards Akmudi. Try, try to turn around that ball, but deflected. Bluffton's defense not giving her a whole lot of room to no. work with today. And they're going to be content just kind of kicking the ball out every time they get it. When you have a player like that that has, yeah, looking at the looking at Columbus Grove on the year, 41 goals and 24 from one player, you have the ability to focus in and one player, take them away and see what happens there. Right. And so far, so good for Bluffton. And a trip up there, Burkholder and Akmudi get together right at midfield. So yeah. we enter the last 14. 
oftentimes you just see the referee let play continue right there. They call it advantage. Bluffton still had possession, so you can let him go. But instead he says free kick. He's having a quick word with Lauren Ockmoody as well, who sounds like he thinks she's getting a little bit overly aggressive mm -hmm. in the last few minutes. Well, she got to be dealing with a great amount of frustration. Sure. This is a team that's had a lot of success this year, and yeah, these are some of those games that help define or refine, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, yep. the, the temperaments, and she does have a s score in the game, but she'd like to have a couple of more. Yeah, I'm sure these are, especially when you're at this point of the year and you really see a team that controls the ball a lot like Bluffton does, that really will get you ready for tournament time. And I think that's got to be a a nice way this schedule has fallen to get this game late in the year because I think you'd rather have it at this time than you would in late August or September to sure. really prepare because you're going to see a lot of possession teams tournament time. And those are usually the ones that find their way in those districts and the regionals and beyond. Yeah, no doubt about it. Sometimes it's good to be able to at least try to figure out how to score or attack from different angles. We haven't seen that a whole lot from Columbus Grove today. Uh, their approach has stayed pretty consistent, just trying to pop the ball in behind and run on the end of it. But they certainly will be able to take some film, take a look at maybe mm -hmm. what's... Uh, what might have been able to open up for them throughout the course of this game. And I'm wondering, you're, you're the one with, with much more knowledge of the, of the game at I. Is there ways that you can sort of, I'm trying to think of the right word for it, but you can simulate the way you don't want to be played in practice? You know, is there, is there a way to really simulate that and play, try to find the, the ways that you can combat the way uh, maybe the strategy you don't want to see. Yeah, you certainly can. I mean, you, you, can, you can set up your defense in multiple multiple ways. You know, Bluffton again playing a, a flat back four and doing a really nice job staying with Ock Moody. You see Diller's shot right there saved by the goalkeeper. Nice job from her. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there are certainly different looks. You know, each week, I remember playing football each week, we had the scout team that had to learn at least ten of the plays of the other team and learn those formations quickly on a whim and, uh, you know, I don't want to say Columbus Grove's soccer program isn't doing stuff like that, but uh, certainly worth mm -hmm. worth a shot trying to figure out some different ways to attack. And maybe they just really, really like what they have going, and that's what they want to stick mm -hmm. with. Yeah, it could could also be a real testament to Bluffton how much they've mm. been able to con kind of control the tempo and control the game. I think we have both seen plenty of soccer to to see some of that as Bluffton. Uh, Gets a couple of rotations back in. Looks like Eacher Skulls and Jordan Schweingruber back into the game. And Skulls had that point blank, couldn't square it up cleanly. And Columbus Grove will clear it out. Ruth Myers on that far sideline. Dancing the ball ahead for Columbus Grove. And it's going to leak out to that far sideline and give it back to Bluffton. Yeah, and I think... Bluffton's, uh, what they've done so successfully in this game to thwart the Columbus Grove attack and to keep them from doing what they like to do is pressuring up the field, pressuring in midfield, pressuring really back in the, the defensive third. Bluffton has done a nice job. Even right there, you see Gieske step up and take away the pass over the top. And that's the way you beat a team that likes to pop it up and over. Just don't give them the time or the space to send it downfield. You, know, you can try to what they call face face guard or man mark Ock Moody in the middle all you want, but she's got so much mm -hmm. speed and she's got so much stamina that she's going to have fresh legs throughout the entire game. So you're bound to slip up at least once or twice. Mm -hmm. But if you're Bluffton, like right here, there's too much space in the midfield. Now they're able to move the ball into the final third. But if Bluffton closes that off and makes it tough for them to move the ball forward uh, or just keeps them uncomfortable, it keeps mm -hmm. them out of rhythm, and even if they're completing some passes, they have to maybe stop and come back for it and, and slow down, and it just messes up that flow. Well, here Columbus Grove can uh, play it in their offensive uh, portion of the field. But it's not going to last long. Here's Eaches takes off for Bluffton. 
little three on three game at the moment for some reinforcements come in. That ball just gets ripped away. Steen there, ready to check back in. As we're under the 10 minute mark to go in the contest, four to one. Let's run down the, the scoring. It was Carson Howenstein who got the first score of the game, a correction from that first half. As she got a, a head one nothing, and Allison Diller scored the second goal for Bluffton, making it 2-0 for the Lady Pirates in the second half. Sammy Scholes scored with 31-16 on the second half clock. Then uh, Lauren Akmudi got Columbus Grove on the board, get that goose off of there. Made it 3-1, but a quick answer a couple of minutes later by J.C. Crawford of Bluffton. And that's where we stand, 4-1 on the Charles River scoreboard. Long run for Bluffton to catch up to this one. And it's... Devity Pingle that ripped it away, and she stays with it. Midfield, keeping it going. The freshman pushing the field for Columbus Grove. And a little contact. Not enough for a foul. She tumbles down with Riley Eaches okay. riding hip to hip. And it turns out to be. Well, all right. Referees sometimes see it differently than we do. Actually, a lot of the time, and that's okay. The sun continues to slope down, and we are behind some of the shadows. And right away, Evan, I feel like the temperature's dropped about 10 it degrees. It really has. I'm actually right there with you. Feels good out here now. Yeah. Seven and a half to play in the contest. Bluffton will execute a free kick here after that Grove attack did not go far. The referee's going to check. Make sure Ock Moody's mm -hmm. not too close. Yep. Looks like she's right at 10 yards. Got to so measure this off and back her up. Couple steps, couple mm -hmm. steps. And she takes a step forward when he turns his back. Typical soccer player. And played back in by Kendall Giesegi. Knocked away by Kaitlyn Garmater. And ahead for Columbus Grove. There goes Pingle, tried to sneak on by Matthews. And it a Ruth Myers. And it just gets knocked out for Grove. Quickly extinguished there by Bluffton. Four one on the Charles River scoreboard. Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. There's a pop-up near, near the net. Julia Mahaffey lets that go on by. Goal kick for Bluffton. One of those frustration shots right there. But, hey, I know it's the, it's the girls' night to shine, but we got to give a quick shout-out to the Bluffton uh, boys team who captured the Northwest Conference crown. I believe it was their eighth or ninth straight. Yeah, it's been uh, a run. They are, if I read the stat correctly, 38-0 and 0 in Northwest Conference play all time. So congratulations to them for a good season. The season's still continuing, obviously, yep. but Northwest Conference crown. Another piece of hardware for the boys program. For the treasure chest. That's right. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. <laughs> Sammy Skulls being patient here up top. Fires that in. Didn't look like she got it cleanly like she would have liked. And Goes off a of Bluffton. Well, Columbus Grove will have it back. Down three with five to play. You know, it's funny. I'm trying to think of that. that that's good because you're obviously from that neck of the woods. I'm trying to think of what, what an initial pilot would call that. The, the uh, treasure the chest. Would it, would, it be, would it be another pin on the another pin on the chest? There you go. Pin on the jacket. You know, pin on the jacket. Uh Pilots don't wear many hats. Just helmets. They do not. Just helmets. Now we're just we're just full of Top Gun references. <laughs> Everyone's 
As soon as the ball goes out, everyone's been turning around <laughs> to this game to watch the Little Tykes play behind us. It's kind of funny to watch the crowd more so than it is the actual Yes, action. it is. Looks like some five- and six-year-olds back there mm -hmm. playing some soccer on that tiny field we alluded to earlier. That's my that's my speed right there. That <laughs> that's is right. Get as much chaos in as, as little of a space as possible. You say your speed. I don't think I could keep up with those kids out there. They are moving. <laughs> Uh, it's out for a corner kick. Sorry, wrong game. Wrong over game. Here. <laughs> here we go. 4 1 with Bluffton uh, with possession and the lead. Crawfus has it deflected, and Columbus Grove trying to clear it out, but it leaves the door open for each as they get there. Passes forward to the top of the box. As Skulls worked it out. Skulls blocked her teammate's shot right there. And there's a try. Allison Diller was, was nearest to it. Now J.C. Croft is looking for an angle, deflected by Rihanna Hefner. Now each is, has it taken away by Ockmoody. Well, look ahead for Columbus Grove and for Bluffton. Grove regular season matches still against Ottoville. Last conference game on the road at Crestview, and then they play Kaleida here at home, Putnam County League game. Yeah, I was going to say, don't forget Columbus Grove also mm -hmm. plays in the Putnam County League, which you just alluded to. I think they're undefeated in they that are. as well with games against mm -hmm. Ottoville and Kaleida, two tough opponents mm -hmm. coming up soon for Columbus Grove. So their season far from over. Starting to really ramp up, and yeah, it's because right now, is unless we get a, a flurry of goals here late, you know, just with the Northwest Conference title looking like it is going to go by the wayside for that Putnam County League crown still very, very much in play. But for Bluffton, the rest of the way for the Lady Pirates before tournament time, they will have Corey Rawson at home and then go visit with the Rams of Upper Sandusky. And then that's the... Puts a bow on the regular season and on the tournament time. That draw should be, I, I believe it is this week if I it is not. I think so. I think so. Hard to believe we're getting to that time already in the fall season. Lang, Langles with a hold on for Columbus Grove. Just under two minutes to play. What are we at? Three more weeks of the football regular season? Mm hmm. My goodness. Nice tackle. Well done over there on the far side by Riley Setzer. Good, well-timed tackle. Grove looking for something here late. That's going to go well down that far sideline and be chased down by Jasmine Hastnick. Oops. Good move by Hastings mm -hmm. there. Notice the defender was coming hard, just took a quick touch to her left. Riley each is to hand for Howenstein, and now Sammy Scholes gets in on the action once more. We go below a minute to play. Grove will play it back. And look at this from Allison Diller looking for her second score, but deflected Dotson among those there for Columbus Grove. Keeps it a 4-1 contest in the final minute. I thought each just would shoot that. She goes to Diller instead. Look at the unselfish play from the Pirates. And Skulls just a little high and wide to the right. But that's what makes them so good, right? I mean, they're, they're in a situation where they could easily just try to take some shots at the goal. There's nothing to lose here. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead, they, they play for each other, play with each other, kicking the ball around, and it's going to be a well-deserved yeah. Northwest Conference championship for the Bluffton Pirates. Not padding it right here, but they are going to pad the record and put a bow on a 6-0 and Northwest Conference slate for the Bluffton Pirates. And uh, the ladies' program from Bluffton improves to 12-2 and 6-0 and in Northwest Conference play. Columbus Grove falls to 9-2-1 and 4-1 and and in the league from Evan Skilder. And Jacob O'Neill and Nick Fraley, I'm Garrett Bansfield saying goodnight from Grove on WOSN. <laughs>